glad that you're still with us here on the Morning Express and uh, it's time for us to go to lifestyle. And on Tuesdays, as usual, what we handle is your health. Like we told you earlier on, today we'll be looking at your heart, more specifically cholesterol. And uh, there's an article that was uh, in the papers, I think it was uh, last week, that was talking about uh, some of the fatty foods that cause cholesterol. And we'd like to demystify and put that into perspective because that is definitely a matter that you need to be careful about. And remember, we'll also open the phone line and you can uh, let us know if you have any questions, uh, any comments that you'd like to uh, come through, you can do that. Our Twitter handle, my Twitter handle rather, is at Michael G. Gitonga. If you have any questions, feel free to send them through. Once the phone lines are open, we'll also give you an opportunity to ask our guests uh, any questions that you may have. And uh, joining me in the studio uh, next to me is Ruchika Kohli, who is a, a clinical pathologist. Welcome. Morning. Thank you. Good to see you again. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Mohamed Jalen, who is a cardiologist. Welcome. Th thanks for having me. All right. Now, maybe I'll start with you, uh, Jalen. And uh, first of all, the question would be, what, what exactly is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a form of um, uh, fat, if you like, that um, has uh, very important functions in the body, but in certain uh, conditions is associated with a very... Uh, adverse effect uh, is a harmful to the body if you like. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here as a cardiologist because uh, most of the harm related to cholesterol uh, affects the heart or organs that are related to the heart. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially the, the, the one of the most important things to understand is cholesterol is important. Every single cell in the body uh, ma manufactures cholesterol and requires cholesterol and forms uh, mostly the membrane that sits around the cells that separate one cell from the next. Okay, uh, so you've mentioned that they're, they're, they're important uh, uh, to, to our body. Uh, contrary to what many of us may believe that uh, cholesterol is all bad. Absolutely. Cholesterol is, is, is almost all good everybody needs cholesterol we wouldn't survive or live without cholesterol mm -hmm. um, uh, it is an important structure that uh, combines with proteins and forms the structural integrity of the body so every single uh, shape and uh, uh, structure that we have uh, comes from cholesterol okay um, oh, okay uh, Richu, uh, Ruchika uh, Koli um, maybe you can just start by first of all letting me know what exactly is uh, clinical pathologist what do they do what do they specialize in okay our specialty is mainly in laboratory medicine uh, where we actually oversee testing in the laboratory in terms of how the test is performed what quality uh, assurances are given for each test and then of course speaking with the doctors who order the test and discussing uh, the test results interpreting the test advising on the way forward advising on further tests that are to be done mm -hmm. okay and uh, now in regards to cholesterol what uh, what are your comments in regards to you know levels of, of cholesterol okay um, as dr. Mohammed has said yes cholesterol is actually good so we do need it in our body so patients should not have this perception that it should absolutely be negative we do have what we call normal reference ranges for cholesterol levels uh, the reference ranges that we have currently in the country are not specific to our population but studies done show that they can be used across across board All right. so depending on the type of cholesterol that we test we do have what we call normal ranges for them fantastic okay at this point this is what I call the magic of TV we were initially uh, three guests now we I mean two guests now we have three and uh, welcome into the studio uh, Kalebi and uh, you're also a consultant pathologist yeah. okay we are talking about cholesterol what are some of the causes uh, of cholesterol uh, so I mean uh, I think what you're asking is what are the causes of bad cholesterol bad or cholesterol. high cholesterol yeah. Maybe we could still look at col what, what gives us cholesterol. Yes. Then we can look at what gives us the, the, the high range or yes. the, the bad cholesterol vis-a-vis. Uh, yeah. So I think, uh, first of all, uh, this whole discussion we're having right now came up because there are new guidelines coming out right now in America and all over the world. People have been questioning, uh, is cholesterol that bad? And I think both my colleagues have mentioned cholesterol is not all bad. Mm -hmm. And actually cholesterol is not a bad thing but it has been associated with certain diseases. So where is cholesterol coming from? Cholesterol is actually in the body. Uh, it's produced by the body. Even if you don't ingest any cholesterol, your body is actually able to produce cholesterol. In fact, we know now that more than 85% of the cholesterol in somebody's body is produced from the, within the body rather than from the diet. Mm -hmm. So whatever you take from the diet, the, uh, cholesterol is mainly found in animal foods. You take about uh, animal-sourced uh, foodstuff, 
So you're talking about meat, you're talking about eggs and the rest. When you ingest them, they have cholesterol. Plants don't have cholesterol. So when you see uh, all these uh, advertisements about oils from plants and they're saying cholesterol free, of course it's cholesterol free from the first place. Mm -hmm. It's the animal foods, people who eat animal uh, feed stuff or animal uh, sources of food are the ones who tend to ingest cholesterol. Mm -hmm. But now we know from science and from uh, many years of studies that it's the cholesterol that is produced by the body. And cholesterol is produced by all cells in the body but more than 70% of the, the, the cholesterol within your body is actually produced by the liver. So the liver is the factory of cholesterol. And if you produce the cholesterol from carbohydrates, from starch that you, you, you feed on, from the fats that you feed on, because cholesterol is a type of fat. But it's actually, as Dr. Jelan explained, it's, it's a very integral uh, lipid in the body that is required for all your cells. Every single cell of your body requires cholesterol. It's also cholesterol required for things like vitamin D production, different hormones. So it's a very important uh, part of the body and people are trying to understand it more and I think that's the discussion we're having today. Absolutely. Okay, Dr. Jalen, uh, before we come to the normal uh, cholesterol and maybe if there is a problem, if you have too, uh, the cholesterol is too low, uh, what are some of the risks that one uh, uh, is subject to, to have once you have very high cholesterol? Well, the thing about cholesterol is cholesterol is in all, uh, across the whole body. So as, as uh, my colleagues have said, it's in, in all cells in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem occurs when the cholesterol is mainly in the blood. And there are different types of cholesterol, different types of ways of carrying cholesterol. And certain carriers of cholesterol keep the cholesterol in the blood. And that's where the problems occur because the blood uh, is carried in vessels. And those, uh, those blood vessels are small. They're about three or four millimeters. Uh, the blood vessels send blood to the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, they're about one centimeter diameter if they're selling, sending blood to the, to, to, to the brain. And that cholesterol can deposit into the wall of the heart, of the artery, the wall of the blood vessel. So when the cholesterol goes into the wall of the blood vessels, it makes the space inside the blood vessel smaller. And as a result, mm -hmm. uh, it means that the amount of blood flowing through the artery becomes less. If you combine this with some other risk factors like smoking, uh, which makes the lining of that wall much more permeable, then that actual wall can tear. And when it tears, it can cause catastrophic events like a heart attack, mm -hmm. uh, like a stroke, uh, like a, an aneurysm rupture in the, st in, in, in the main aorta. So these are the reasons why cholesterol is of concern. And it's mainly the cholesterol in the blood. And it's about how we manage the cholesterol, keeping it away from the blood, make, making sure that most of it's in the liver or in the fat that, uh, that's important. And this is why we see young people who are relatively slim, the cholesterol isn't in their fat, right. in the, isn't in their soft tissue, isn't in their skin. The cholesterol's in their blood, and we're finding these people getting heart attacks. Yeah, because contrary to what many may believe, uh, cholesterol, high cholesterol, you'd imagine that is only found in people who are, you know, obese. Absolutely, Is, yes. is that is that a myth? Th that's, a, that's a big myth, and uh, there's a r relationship between obesity um, which, which, which also somehow alters the way that we manage our cholesterol mm -hmm. and allows a little bit more cholesterol to be in the blood. Right. Uh, but by and large, the, the, the liver is much, much more responsible for that. And uh, it's the way the liver manages the cholesterol that determines whether you have more cholesterol in the blood, which essentially means you're at more risk of, uh, of, of, of the heart uh, related diseases. Okay, Dr. Ruchika, is it possible to have uh, um, cholesterol as a genetic problem? Yes, it is. Uh, not very common, rare, happens in early childhood, even from birth, it is possible. There are um, the different types of cholesterol that we have in our bodies. And, um, you know, as was mentioned, you can either get cholesterol by eating cholesterol rich foods, or the body also produces cholesterol in itself. So when the mechanisms which produce this cholesterol become abnormal or are interfered with either through a genetic abnormality you can get excess production of certain types of cholesterol so yes. you uh, as you mentioned that it is it can be genetic that means it, it, can children have high levels of cholesterol very rarely they can have one type of the cholesterol, the, t the triglycerides for example, can be elevated okay. uh, to certain I genetic know. conditions. Yes, yes. May, uh, just to add, uh, and that's the new science that's coming out, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, has been discussed so far. We always ask ourselves in this uh, environment, you find these guys, uh, for example the Maasai, they eat all sorts of uh, meat Precisely. and uh, 
uh, their diet is mainly made is of, 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 and, of animal fat. I mean, I, I'm a pathologist, and uh, early in my days, about 20 years ago, we did a study uh, among Africans uh, with uh, some colleagues from the Department of Anatomy, just looking at uh, 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 human hearts among Africans. And you find this guy who looks relatively obese, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, well built, and when you look inside the heart, the vessels are clean. There's not even a single atheroma, you know, the deposit of the fat. And you find some other guy, he looks very thin, and he has a lot of uh, atheromas. And sitting in the lab, I mean, now I'm, uh, I'm doing mainly laboratory tests for, for the doctors. You find a doctor sending a patient, and this patient comes looking very lean, and his cholesterol is so high, yeah? Uh, and there are certain particular communities that I'm sure you have noticed. They come and their cholesterol is almost invariably high, higher than others. So there is a genetic, I mean, we are all made of, it's the gene that determines how we are or our makeup. And now it's actually being confirmed that more than 80% of the cholesterol in your body, in the blood, in the, and how much cholesterol actually goes into the blood is determined by the genetic makeup. And of course your age, as you progress, the way your DNA handles your body also matters. So these two factors, and that's why you tend to find that, I think the most important message that should be coming out uh, is that it's not about how your weight. I mean, those are what we call risk factors that make you eventually uh, be more exposed to a disease, uh, the disease outcome of cholesterol. But how high your cholesterol is and how bad it is depends on uh, your genetic makeup. And that's why you tend to find this run in the family. Somebody just falls all of a sudden and you hear he died. He had a stroke. I mean, I just have a colleague right now, 30, uh, 34 year old, had a stroke. He only found out for the first time that his, uh, his cholesterol was very high. And the guidelines now is that you want to test the cholesterol, uh, you know, even as early as 20 years of age, you want to start people getting into the habit of testing their cholesterol. Because once you know your cholesterol is high, mm -hmm. then you are in a different category. And now you go to jail and now to go and risk, uh, categorize you further. Okay. And there's a lot of science coming behind this, and that's why we are getting all these discussions coming up here. So from your, from your, your study, what, what, is, what creates the difference between now the Maasai who uh, are predominantly on meat yes. and, and animal fat yes. and do not have cholesterol as opposed to now others who you know, are more exposed to cholesterol if they eat the same uh, amount of uh, uh, animal? And to make it simple, it boils down to how your body handles uh, uh, cholesterol. How, how it produces the cholesterol and how it uh, removes the cholesterol from your body because mm -hmm. it's the liver that does literally both. Now, in fact, it's the carbohydrates that you take when you eat all these uh, 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 sugary foods mm -hmm. uh, that will determine how you convert it into cholesterol. So for certain people, they will tend to convert literally uh, what I call a one-way. They will tend to convert everything that they eat into cholesterol. Yeah? And the other people, they'll eat as much as they can and nothing, no, none of it actually goes into the blood. Most of it will actually not even go into their, uh, into their skin or soft tissue, it will just be excreted. So different people have different metabolism. Just as much as we know for many diseases, so you find somebody smokes all their life and they don't get cancer. Somebody else hardly smokes and they get cancer uh, related to smoking, just from passive smoking. So it's all about our genes and we're going into the era of saying personalized medicine and everybody is an individual and they need to know, they need to be known and they need to know themselves and that's how they're able to handle uh, basically their life, just like the cars, you know, uh, mm -hmm. each car is different and you handle each car different in terms of how you take it to, uh, to the garage, what you do about it, it's the same thing with the body, we need to understand our body more and not all Maasai's are the same, just as not all Somalis or Kikuyus are the same, right. even within the same Maasai community, mm -hmm. certain people tend to have more heart, uh, heart diseases than others, so we are not all uniform, yeah. Okay, Dr. Richika, now that we are still on food, uh, are there some foods that are recommended maybe to reduce cholesterol? Well, I mean, we've just heard now that the main source of cholesterol is animal foods. I know that in, you know, if you read health magazines and if you're on the health websites, they'll talk about eating certain seeds or certain nuts and certain oils right. that purposely, um, purportedly reduce cholesterol levels, mm -hmm. things like flaxseed seeds or things like certain types of nuts like walnuts. Um, I'm not sure if there is hard evidence behind um, what kind of diet that one should do or if there's a prescribed diet. I know there are lots of studies now going on um, that do say if you eat more of a certain type of food, you can actually reduce your bad cholesterol levels and increase your good cholesterol levels. Um, so yes, there is, there is information out there. It's just now the evidence that the hard evidence that's there to back it up is now 
coming to the fore. All right. Yeah. Dr. Gillen, let's talk about lifestyle because I know when it comes to heart disease and, you know, heart attacks and all that, there's a lot to do with lifestyle. And looking at especially our urban areas now, our lifestyle has really changed uh, down from the food we eat to the amount of exercise we have. And it would be interesting to hear whether the Maasai is maybe it's the amount of uh, walking that they do and their grazing that, you know, keeps them healthy. But what role does lifestyle have to play when it comes to cholesterol and general uh, health of the heart? Lifestyle is very important and uh, the first thing to say and perhaps we haven't said this enough is yes you may have a genetic predisposition to having high cholesterol mm -hmm. but there's something that you can do about it. Don't hide behind the fact that I'm genetically programmed to have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. The things that can be done and we know that uh, we can modify somebody's genetic uh, 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 destiny if you right. like. Um, <coughs> There's good evidence um, that certain dietary uh, 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 amendments can result in improvement in your total body cholesterol, in, in your total blood cholesterol. Um, what um, I think Dr. Richika was saying was that we don't know for sure because this is so many things that can cause a heart attack, right. whether when we do that we actually eliminate the risk of a heart attack. Mm. But there's good evidence that if you exercise regularly, exercising regularly means that you need to get your heart rate above 100 beats per minute for 30 minutes a day, four or five times a week. So if you can do that, and there's so many different ways of exercising nowadays, you can go for a jog, you can stand in front of a computer game like an Xbox and try and play Xbox. <laughs> you, can, um, you can go to dance classes, there's so many different ways. You can, in fact, you can stand up Take a hike. five minutes <laughs> every hour at your, in your office and go for a brisk walk and then come back. Uh, the, the different ways of achieving your target of 30 minutes. But if you do that, there's good evidence that you can lower your risk of a heart attack. And at the same time, since we're focusing on cholesterol, you can lower your risk, you, you can lower your, your bad cholesterol levels and increase your good cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about good and bad cholesterols because that hasn't come out yet. Um, <coughs> there's cholesterol, cholesterol is transported in the blood with proteins. And some of those proteins, if you like, take the blood away, take the cholesterol away from the blood and put it to the liver. And some of those proteins take the cholesterol from the liver and put it in the blood. And there's good evidence that if you have uh, the type of cholesterol that the, the, the pushes the, the, the cholesterol into the liver, mm -hmm. what they call HDL, then your risk of a heart problem is lower. So there's techniques, exercises, diets that can improve your HDL levels and reduce your risk of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And likewise, um, there's medicines or there's uh, exercises that can reduce your LDL levels, a bad cholesterol type, and uh, reduce the risk of you suffering a a heart attack by reducing the amount of total cholesterol in the blood. All right. Wonderful. Now, for those of you who are at home, we'd like to give you this opportunity. Should you have any questions, any comments that you'd like to post to our panel, feel free to give us a call. Uh, the numbers are now showing on your screen, and we'll be more than happy to uh, see whether we can assist. And uh, Dr. Kalebi, let's talk about low levels of cholesterol, because we've talked about very high. Is it risky to have, uh, or is it bad for your health to have very low levels of cholesterol? Uh, interestingly, I mean, I must say uh, cholesterol is actually one of the vital uh, elements in the body and uh, the body will actually go to great lengths to make sure that it produces cholesterol. Mm -hmm. In fact, the problem as we were talking about earlier is uh, the body has over the years, I mean the, uh, human beings over the years have evolved to an extent to, uh, that they are always, the body is always considering how to produce cholesterol that it goes on overdrive in some certain people because it's an integral part of the body. So you find that to have low levels of cholesterol is literally uh, something you don't really worry, worry so much about. It will be in the, in the few cases. Uh, you talk about things like in instance of starvation. There are certain genetic abnormalities that you can actually have low cholesterol. But for the common one, Aichi, that's not even something we will really worry about uh, on this other side. Mm. Our biggest concern, and I think that's what we really need to focus on, is the high cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, the, uh, the, the additional risk factor that cholesterol do, uh, that, cho uh, that will make cholesterol be a bad element in your body. Because cholesterol is inherently good, but of course anything in excess is, is bad. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to, to recap some of the things that have been mentioned, I think that's come, that should come out very importantly. We have cholesterol will not just free, uh, freely flow in the, in the blood. It requires to be associated with certain proteins. Now those proteins are designed to transport the cholesterol to where it's needed in the body and to get the cholesterol out when it's not required. 
Now, Dr. Jiran talked about HDL, yeah, high density lipoprotein. It's a form of uh, cholesterol. It's a form of transporting of the cholesterol. There's a low density lipoprotein. Now, even that low density lipoprotein, we have different types, just as much as HDL as well. And each one of those is what we measure in the lab to try and determine is it good cholesterol or bad cholesterol. Your, uh, your total cholesterol might be actually uh, normal, but you have very high uh, levels of bad cholesterol, LDL, and particularly sub subtype of LDL. And that's why I'll say good science now is you don't just want to take a cholesterol test. You actually want to go, and uh, Dr. Jelan will say that, from, for example, in the hand, at the heart center, a lot of the doctors now will want to go into the ca different categories, things like uh, lipoprotein A, you know, right. uh, lipoprotein a small A. So you want to test these things to be able to categorize that person's risk. Now, once you say this person's risk is at this level, now you look at the additional risks. And the additional risks now means how do you bring down those risks? You might not be able to do much in terms of how your body produces cholesterol, but you can do something in terms of how it will to manage it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the important thing then becomes once you have identified those category of people, a lot of the time actually they might end up requiring to go into uh, to, to drugs, antioxidants, mm -hmm. and the rest. We All do right. have certain foods that actually can lower cholesterol, mm -hmm. and they actually have what we call good fat because they tend to increase the the good. Uh, lipo, li, 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 lipoproteins and the good uh, uh, type of lipids in the body. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we'll uh, just take a few calls. We'll start with Eva in Nakuru. Thank you for calling, Eva. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, straight to your question or comments, Eva. Yes, my name is Eva. I'm calling from Nakuru. Mm -hmm. And last two weeks ago, I was listening to TV. Mm -hmm. I, I was watching a program, and the issue was about what causes the heart attack mm -hmm. and about cholesterol okay and one of the doctors mentioned that the latest discovery or the rest, the rest they have proved that cholesterol does not cause heart attack mm -hmm. and what what cholesterol does acts like a fire brigade okay uh, but it comes to sort out some other issues Okay, so what's your, what's your question? Or yeah, my, my question was, I wanted to know whether that is true. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Eva. Thank you. We'll go to another call uh, from Evelyn in Kisumu. Good morning, Evelyn. Good morning. Yes, thank you for calling. Your question or comment? I, uh, I just wanted to ask a question. Is that, that, that cholesterol makes someone add weight? Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, second? Mm-hmm. What are the kinds of food that you people can advise us to eat so that we can reduce our cholesterol? All right. Thank you very much, Evelyn, uh, from uh, Kisumu. Uh, we also have uh, Selina. Good morning, Selina. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, morning, Selina. To your question. Uh, morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yes, uh, no, I was just uh, thanking you. Uh, Dr. Uh, John uh, Jalian mm -hmm. is uh, my doctor. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'm very happy to see him there. Fantastic. Uh, do you have a let question? Us, let us take the advice that he's giving us. You know, he operated me, he fixed me the test maker. Okay. So I'm very happy to see him there. Let us take the address they are giving us. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Dr. Jalen, did you organize for that call to come? <laughs> yes, we, th th there's a small fee going into a bank account very soon. <laughs> That's on a light note, uh, definitely. Okay, um, let's go to the questions. There's uh, Eva from Nakuru who wanted to know that uh, are these, she watched a program and they were saying that cholesterol doesn't cause heart attack. Is that true, uh, Jalen? Maybe we should, uh, absolutely. I mean, this is a great forum because we can now demystify uh, some of the concerns. Cholesterol is strongly associated with heart attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, a big study internationally, out of all the various things that are associated with heart attacks, mm -hmm. the biggest contributor was an elevated cholesterol or an abnormal cholesterol balance. Uh, so there's no question that having uh, a high blood cholesterol is associated with heart attacks. Mm -hmm. um, it is possible to have a heart attack and have a low blood cholesterol level, but for you that cholesterol is probably too high, even if it's low for the general population. Uh, the main problem is that the cholesterol sits inside the um, lining of the artery uh, and, uh, and, and that causes the narrowing of the main vessel 
And the heart attack, uh, just for those who don't know, occurs when a blood vessel uh, that sends blood and oxygen to the heart mm. gets blocked so that the heart doesn't receive any blood or oxygen. And I'd say 99.9% .9 of cases, it's related to a cholesterol uh, buildup in the main artery, uh, in, the, in the lining of the main artery that's sending blood to the heart. So, yes, maybe it may not be related to your dietary intake of cholesterol, but there's no question that cholesterol is strongly associated and is the biggest cause of heart attacks, even bigger than smoking, but only because fewer people smoke. Okay. I think uh, uh, what should come out very clearly here is uh, it's less about the cholesterol you eat, it's more about the cholesterol in your blood. And what should everybody should be doing, literally. Uh, so the, the, the recommendation now is that the dietary intake of cholesterol is, is no longer an issue. And that's come out very clearly. Mm -hmm. It's about the cholesterol in your body, the balance of cholesterol in your body, how your body handles cholesterol, and just not looking at the numbers. I, I, I know many people come to me and they say, oh, my results look good this time. Look, my number has gone up or down. Yeah? But it's your individual risk factor, and you actually have people who have a heart attack with normal cholesterol. Okay. Uh, so um, I want us to move on to the next question now. Dr. Ruchika, does uh, cholesterol make you add weight? I guess it's a relationship between cholesterol and weight. And fat. Yes, and, and the fat, fat and where it's deposited and how your body handles it. Um, of course, if it's just in your blood, then it's not going to have a direct impact on your weight. But if it's deposited in your fatty tissues, in your adipose tissue, mm -hmm. then yes. Um, but that would be more in people who are already uh, overweight as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she also asked about the foods, but I think we already handled that in terms of foods that uh, reduce cholesterol. Uh, Dr. Jalen, what are some of the ways you can tell that you have high cholesterol levels? Do you have to go to hospital? Are there some ways you can actually self-test? Um, well, by and large, I'd suggest that you go to a reputable laboratory where they can test your blood uh, cholesterol level. Uh, there isn't a way of looking in the mirror or determining it. There's some people who have um, predictors, there's certain skin characteristics but they're extremely rare and I wouldn't rely on those. Uh, it's very simple. You go to a laboratory where they test this regularly and have regular validation. Okay, so you uh, need to go to a laboratory. There's uh, no other way. Get it done. Okay. There's no other way. All right. Well, we'll take a call from Robert in Nairobi. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Oh, okay. Yes, Robert, to your question. I think he has a condition which uh, gives him a different voice. Yes, uh, Robert. I am a cancer survivor. Okay. And I use an artificial voice box. Mm hmm Now I just want to thank Dr. Kalebi. Okay. Because Dr. Kalebi is the one who diagnosed my wife's disease, which is a very rare disease in Kenya and in the world. And he's the one who made us know what was ailing my wife. Okay. I have even written a book and I have commented Dr. Caleb in my book titled The Double All right. Thank you very much, Robert. All thank right. You thank you. Much, thank you. Have a good day. And, uh, we have Mr. Hussein as well. Um, Mr. Hussein, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Straight to your question, Mr. Hussein. Mm -hmm. Nimeenda wakati moja nikajipima katika hiyo wa Kihabor mm -hmm. Na wakaniambia kwamba niko na e, Natural blood, mm -hmm. e, blood clotting katika mwili mm -hmm. Na nasema hii metokana kwa sababu ya chakula mbaya ama kama mfuda mm -hmm. Sasa nikaulika viti nitapata kiba ama za saidika viti kutoka na hii hali Hello? Yes, yes Alafu wakanyambia kwa mba kuna bali ya tembe Madawa mba ni nafaa kutumia katika banda humble Ok Amba vile vile ni tolewe damu katika mbongo hile ni ito nini hile Ok Mbongo damu katika mbongo ama mbongo damu chafu katika mwili Mhm Sasa mimi uwa na katezika pande usingizi Kwa sababu ya wakati, kwa sababu ya wakati swali ni gani? Swali damu nziti nitasaidika vitu katika ya hali ya bao ni nina Okay. So, asante sana. Uh, question, uh, blood clotting. Yeah. Um, so, if I understood him correctly, he says uh, he developed blood clots. I'm not so sure that he said it was related to cholesterol. Yeah? 
but uh, he probably had a blood clot in one of his vessels. Does cholesterol yeah. bring about a, a challenge yes, in, in blood fact, clotting? Uh, yes, it does, okay. because it affects the vessels, and that leads to uh, clot formation, because the vessels then don't protect uh, you from uh, forming clots. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Dr. Jalan mentioned earlier on, the main issue with, uh, uh, with uh, cholesterol is that it will affect the heart, it will affect the brain, but it can also affect vessels in the limbs. Now, those are less lethal than what will happen for you in your brain or your heart. But when they occur in the vessels in the limbs, for example, then you end up with clots. That might be what he was talking about. And his next point was, was it related to diet? And was it related to other things that uh, he, he was consuming? Yes, there is a certain uh, association, but we need to know more details about his particular case. His particular to be able to case. I think I'll advise him to go and see a specialist physician. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the interest of time, because uh, time w is, is against uh, do Dr. Ruchika, uh, pregnancy and cholesterol, are, they, are there risks that one runs? And uh, because pregnancy normally is related with uh, addition of weight, what should one be careful about? I don't think uh, weight gain purely due to being pregnant uh, will increase your cholesterol risk. You do have pregnant women who already have uh, bad cholesterol levels, mm -hmm. so they have to be managed closely um, during their pregnancy. But I wouldn't say that, of course, excessive weight gain in pregnancy is also not ideal, but I would not comment here that um, the do not gain weight in pregnancy because you will, um, just because it's in almost a natural. It's natural. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Jalen, yeah. on pregnancy and the heart. I think um, okay, pregnancy and the heart. Uh, pregnancy is, is somewhat uh, protective against uh, heart attacks, and uh, uh, it's at that period of your life. Uh, women before they, they they reach a menopause are very protected from heart because of the balance of uh, of hormones that they have. Um, there are some uh, rarer uh, heart-related conditions. Uh, that affect pregnant women, but they're not related to cholesterol. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll now uh, include my colleague, Sophia, who's uh, been listening. Uh, Sophia, I think uh, I'm relieved to hear that uh, the fact that I'm bigger than you does not mean I have more cholesterol than you have. Correct. A good panel we had this morning, <laughs> just demystifying some of those issues around co cholesterol. Very helpful for our viewers. And yeah, it's true. Mike, I might be, but I work out, so. Oh yes, you work out. You do a good job of uh, and I try exercising. To eat healthy. Once in a while, I cheat. <laughs> yeah. I try. Thank you for joining us this morning. It uh, has been a great show. Thank you, everybody, for watching today.